Um, I'm trying to keep an eye on the chat, and so I shrunk my screen so I could see the chat. But anyway, uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to, um, what are we doing now? Self-publishing versus traditional publishing. My name is Susan Forrest. I'm going to be your host, moderator, and a panelist. So I'm keeping pretty busy. Um, so I'm gonna try and keep an eye on the chat and on the q and I may miss a few things because it's a lot to watch out for, but I'm gonna give it a try. Actually, I've been doing not too badly the last couple of panels. Um, I'm going to ask the panelists to introduce themselves. Um, I like a panel where people just flow back and forth as long as they're staying close to the topic. Um, but I do have some questions to prompt con conversation if the conversation lags or gets off topic. Around 20 or 30 minutes in, um, I would certainly open it up to questions from the audience. Having said that, you know how it's been going. If, if you've got a question that's up before 30 minutes from now and we can work it in, sometimes it's very relevant to what we're talking about at the moment. Feel free to put your questions in at any time. I do prefer you to put them in the Q&A, but I'm going to try and keep an eye on the chat as well, just in case some questions show up there. And then at 10 to the hour, we need to close down for the next panel. So I think that's all of the housekeeping. Yeah. Actually, oh, Susan, oh, someone yeah. had in a previous panel, they said to make if you put your question in the chat, to put in big letters, question, to make yes. it easier to sort through the uh, find them to yeah. find them that's a good idea thank you well we're almost at the end of the conference and so the tips are coming in this <laughs> <laughs> anyway um carl you're on my left would you mind introducing yourself first please yes uh my name is carl bushner and uh i'm an indie published uh author with uh, three science fiction uh novels and the fourth out near the end of the year the uh, transition from retire retirement was uh, uh, from my career, uh, including it, that included uh, technical and business writing to fiction uh, has been really challenging and um, had many uh, disappointments. Primarily, um, I was disappointed with writing skills and the publishing process. I'm now quite comfortable with uh, writing and uh, quite fluent with the uh, self-publishing process. Super, uh, Faye. Uh, I'm Faye Reinerberg holt I have uh, 13 books out plus a poetry chapbook. Uh, of those 12 of the books have all been traditionally published. Uh, one, and it was a kid's book, uh, the 13th, um, I did self-publish. And I have also, um, you know, publishers change ownership. Sometimes they go down or whatever. I've had books go out of print. And sometimes the publisher is not in a position to reprint. Sometimes they reprint and some have been great. Uh, but I also reprinted a particular book because it was out of print. A couple others I have chosen not to sell, like the reprint would be like self-publishing, uh, but I had the whole um, um, file, so it was uh, very easy. Uh, but I have also done some editing, and I think that that is a very important thing to consider if we're considering self-publishing. So just the whole industry is of interest to me. Sandy. Well, I started writing in the mid eighties officially. Um, I'd done a lot of mental sort of fan fiction earlier on, but uh, I became a lot more serious about it in the late 1990s. And I wanted to publish was the, the thing. I had a bunch of things in, in my uh, computer storage. And uh, it's like, well, they're just sitting there. I, maybe other people would like to read them. But after deal, a year of dealing with a scam agent and their vanity publishing house, I kind of gave up on the books idea for a bit, uh, though I still kept writing them and, and some short fiction. Um, it took a little while longer, but I eventually got the stack of paper. This tells you how long ago this was. 
back from the scam agent, um, which was actually easier than I thought it was going to be to break that up because they'd actually violated their own contract. <laughs> um, and I realized though, I still love the plot and the characters, the writing sucked. And <laughs> oh, it was bad. I, I mean, I, I could probably still find that pile of paper. It's still hiding in the, in the shrubbery. But I, I did a chapter by chapter outline and rewrote it from scratch. And I'd probably need to do that again because it's been a number of years. Um, I have so far um, 30 published short stories and poems. Uh, two more shorts will be published later this year. Um, those are with various, um, some are with various uh, magazines and anthologies and whatnot, and some of them are self published. Uh, I have small micro press novels, i.e., self published. Well, Javari Press is is the, the umbrella for our publications. Um, and there's reasons for doing that. And uh, I have more of those coming out in the next little while. There's a, a novella that releases, uh, it officially goes live tomorrow. It's been pre-ordered. Yes, it's called Confession. It's actually based in the alter egos universe uh, with my main character who is both a financial analyst and an assassin. He now gets to tell his girlfriend what he does outside of the financial an analysis. Um, and that's, not, that's where I am. That's where I'm going to stay pretty much. It's, it's easier for me. Okay, thank you, Sandy. So my name is Susan Forrest, and uh, you can see uh, the first two books of my series um, behind me there, uh, Bursts of Fire and Fights of Marigold. They came out from Laxa Media, which is a small Calgary press. Uh, I have other uh, traditionally pr uh, published books. I have a, a first novel that nobody will ever hear about again. And, <laughs> and a, Rewrite it. <laughs> yeah, right. Don't look for it. Um, it's terrible. Uh, you know what, I, I can just a little aside here, sometimes getting being hard to publish or or not having that first one go through might be an advantage because then you don't have that embarrassment on your career for the rest of forever, <laughs> right? So there, there's a thought about that. Yeah. Uh, and I also have a collection of uh, short fiction out from Five Rivers uh, Press. And a, a whole pile of traditionally published short stories. Now, I only have one experience with self-publishing, and that is because I teach. And because I teach, I wanted to have the experience of going through it. So I took one of my already published uh, short stories that the roots, uh, rights had reverted to me and just went through the process. But that was a few years ago. So my self-publishing knowledge is pretty much out of date and I'm always interested in other people's um, experiences. So I think we've got a great panel covering all of the different aspects here. So I'm not exactly sure where to jump in, but I kind of like what you brought up, Sandy, about the scam because you know, as a teacher, sometimes I will open my class and I usually do a survey ahead of time. And one of the questions I have is what experience do my students have and some of them will say I've published a book or you know I'm in the process of getting a book published and when I ask them about it sometimes I find out there is a kind of um, a press that I would ask a lot of questions about yeah. if not a scam and and then it's a little bit delicate to say mm, you know that might not be your best route you know uh, so yeah I think can we just start off by informing anybody in the audience about what to watch out for that's not a good <clears throat> thing to do. The basic thing to watch for is how much money are they asking you to pay them? Because a real publisher will cover the costs of editing, they will do their cover, they, they, that's, they do the costs. They do not ask you to pay them $5,000 for a um, pallet of books. Um, and God, what was it? I think it was two cent, 
$2 a page for editing. And I found out later this company was actually paying U of A English majors 25 cents per page to do the editing. Yeah. And if you do, when, when I got the contract, you know, I got an offer to publish and I, I was, oh, I, I was like three feet off the floor. It was like, wow, finally. And we got the, the, the contract. And that's when we went, oh, no. So no, running away real fast because they owned all the rights. The publisher did. Nothing about, oh yeah, and we if this goes into, you know, uh, foreign rights, you, you get, you know, X percent. It was like, no, we, we got it. Um, there is a wonderful, uh, for, for people now, a wonderful site, Writers Beware. And basically what they do is um, they report on, on the how scammy a publisher is going to be because they're popping up like flies, usually in places that are not in North America. And you, one of the red flags there is how good is the English? Because a lot of them are not native English speakers. And a lot of times they will clone their website, change the the names and maybe the color scheme and set up shop again once that that iteration has been um Exposed. outed as a bad thing. Um but and you see on a number of the, the Facebook groups, people will go, I've got an offer, you know. The company called me and they want to publish my book. Honk and big red flag. Um, yeah, they won't contact you. No. And you know, basically money flows toward the author. That's bottom line. Bottom line. Yeah. So I don't know if Carl or, or Faye, you've had issues with um, people running into the scams. I haven't. Uh, but I've gone a very traditional route yeah. and there are reasons that I haven't necessarily gone in the direction of self-publishing. I think, you know, whatever our decision, it, it can be right either way, but we have to look at our strengths and weaknesses. And one of the things that's hardest for me, though, even when you're traditionally published, you just have to do it. But I'm not a very good salesperson, mm. you know, <laughs> that's the bottom line. And I'm mm. not into a lot of the social media. And I always vow I will do better, but somehow I don't seem to get there. So I've gone a very traditional route um, in terms of uh, publishing. And uh, so I haven't actually had that problem, but I believe it's there. I get concerned even with parents who think they have a child who is a very talented person who probably is, but then the parents pay for that child or youth to have the book published. And I think they're not really learning the industry that way. And sometimes they are being uh, taken, I think. Yeah. You know, perhaps I can shed a little bit of light on this because there are i mean there's there's essentially four ways to publish a book you can either go through an agent who in turn picks up a publisher or you can go directly to the publisher and the commissions on a publisher are maybe 10 to 15 percent and half of that if you go through the agent or you can go through these publishing houses they they advertise themselves as self-publishing houses and the, these are these are organizations like, um, uh, well, Friesen Press, for example, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, Telman out of out of Victoria. Like Friesen is a very big company. Oh yeah. And and they advertise and they say we will publish your book and they will. Their beginning package is fifteen hundred dollars, 
and that that gives you a little bit of work on the design of the cover or you know putting titles on a cover or something like that and picking out a getty image or something like that and a and and formatting the interior of the book and and uh, putting it on ingram you know which has got what 39,000 bookstores listed but that's fifteen hundred dollars. But you, you know, their top package where you get all their advertising and everything else, fifteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So yeah, and I think here's a good place to because I think Faye, you kind of brought this up a little bit, the differences between traditional and self-publishing. If you are a writer, doesn't matter which form you take, money flows to you. Mm -hmm. If you are a publisher, you have expenses. So if you go the traditional route, the publisher will pay you for the work that you've produced. The money goes to you. If you self-publish, you're now wearing two hats. Mm -hmm. So as a writer, you should be getting paid, hopefully sooner or later, eventually, if books sell. But you are also a publisher and publishers do have expenses. You have expenses for cover art, you have expenses for editing. The books should be edited. Uh, you have maybe expenses for layout. Again, it depends on your skill set, what you're able to do yourself. <clears throat> Generally speaking, it's not a good idea to try and do your own art or get your nephew to do your art. You should get, because covers are one of the big things that are going to sell your self-published book. Um, now, if you have that skill set, if you can do interior layout, if you've got the program Vellum, which I don't have, uh, if you've got, or, or maybe Scrivener will export it to whatever format that you need. If you're willing to go into Amazon and tick off, yes, I've met this requirement, this requirement, this requirement. That is an entire skill set, which you can have or you can learn. Uh, Sandy and, and Carl, I think you guys have both got those skill sets or have picked them up along the way. But if you don't have those skill sets, you can hire out that work to Friesen's or to whoever, but I, I think it's really important to pay attention to how much you're paying for how much you're getting. I know that I am a freelance editor and I, I will edit for, um, for clients, and, but I, when I meet them, I always counsel them, have you tried joining a self-help group? Have you tried taking courses? Have you tried some of these things? Because I know Editing is expensive. And let's face it, I'm not one of the top paid editors because I, I know how little fiction writers make. And so I, I don't charge very much, but it still adds up. If you're paying that out of your pocket, if you're giving me $1,000 or $2,000 just for the editing, are you going to make that back when you sell the book? For 99% of the people, probably not. So if you're paying $15,000 to Friesen, is that money you're going to make back? You have to have these decisions. And there are people that will do it for less. Yeah. I, I think um, it's important, though, and, and uh, Sandy, I'll just turn it over to you in a moment. But I really think, um, and uh, part of it is why I like traditional publishing, but I really think editing is so important. And I think people should realize that having a beta reader is not having an editor. Having a critique group is not having an editor. A structural editor does not necessarily go through as a copy editor would. And then you have to have the production people too. And uh, some people become extremely good at wearing uh, many hats. But when it comes to your own work, I really firmly believe you cannot read your own work in the same way as, say, an editor with what I call cold eyes. <laughs> you just uh, see it differently than you uh, will see it yourself. And I think all of those steps and people are important. Uh, Sandy, you were going to add something, I think. Yeah, um, actually, Gary is wonderful with the, the the computer stuff which is wonderful um and he has created a template that you can just type the book into and it makes a six by nine book so you know where where all the widows and orphans are you 
can put, you know, you put the chapters in, it puts the uh, um, table of contents in, it, it, it's, it's a, it, it takes out all of that formatting problem. And it just, you just type the book in, um, which makes things, in a sense, easier. Um, and uh, we also use a, um, we use uh, LibreOffice, which is a free word analog, does all kinds of things. It will save as the doc and the docx. I don't know about the Mac versions, but um, <laughs> uh, but and we also use the GIMP, which is a well, it's way better than Photoshop, but it does have a learning curve to it in order to do the covers. And GIMP you download free. the cover template from Amazon, and it tells you exactly how much how big it should be. You get your art. And um, actually, the cover for the one confession that's coming out about um, half an hour to do the cover. And it's just a because it's an e coming out as an ebook. It's just a front cover. Um, once I found the the image I wanted, it took me about half an hour to do the cover because there's image, there's a bit of text. Okay, well, we seem to be drifting into the how-to in self-publishing. Right. Uh, does anybody else want to weigh in on that? No, I, I would like to, well, no, I, I, I would like to make the point that if people are, they, they have to make some fundamental decisions in the beginning. Am I going to go through a, uh, through a traditional publishing routine or am I going to self-publish? And that pretty well it depends on your objectives in going into writing. And, and the objectives can range from, I'm gonna become rich and famous through to, oh, I just wanna have some printed books to give away at Christmas time. Mm -hmm. So it can, it can go that whole, that whole gomlet. And it depends on what you wanna do. If you wanna become rich and famous, well, then, you know, self-publishing is probably not the way to go. You know, despite the much lower commissions on, from publishers, but at least you're going to get a broad market. So I think you really have to decide what is it you want to do as, as a writer. And I'd like to add to that. I totally agree and would like to add, for instance, if people want to do an autobiography for their family, you know, if they want to do their memoirs, uh, for their family. If for some reason their timeline is short, maybe they're not well, or maybe there's some other reason why their timeline is short, and they, it's simply not realistic to go through a traditional publisher. I think self-publishing is a terrific option uh, in those cases, and I think there are many other instances too where it becomes a really good option for people. Well, and I'm not an expert, but uh, I certainly have been told that depending on your genre, uh, that certain genres like um, space opera, if you can write in series, uh, a seven book series in the course of a year, uh, it's my understanding that series and being prolific, feeding the machine, making sure that your readers always have a new book every few months, um, that those can actually work very well and people can start to actually bring in the income. Anybody want to weigh in on that? Well, I do know someone who's done that, um, Glenn Stewart. Um, he writes space opera, and the that boy is a machine. Um, he has got I don't I, I think there's over sixty books now, in various series, um, and it, it's just awesome. Um, and he he was able to quit his job as a CFO of a major, a big company here in Calgary. And he's, he's exclusive to Amazon because a huge chunk of his income actually comes from the Kindle Unlimited. But yeah, it, it's great rollicking space opera. <laughs> On the other hand, you know, I'm wide for that same reason, because there's more people in the world who don't like Amazon than do. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, uh, shall we talk about distribution platforms for self-publishing? Um, okay, well, the, well, the big debate always seems to be, do you stick with, what is it, KDP? Is that the, the one? Yes, yeah. well, Amazon. Or do you go right. wide across everybody? Yeah. Um, the actually one of the new um, methodologies of public is um, that well it's not really new but it, it's it's called an aggregator and the one I'm using now is called draft to digital to the number um, Mark Leslie uh, was in, involved in that uh, is, I think he still is what they do is they will submit your book to Amazon, to Kobo, to Barnes and Noble, to pretty much everybody else on the planet. Um, the only, uh, oh yeah, and draft to digital has acquired Smashwords, which is yet another option. Um, the real problem with that is they, they their their upload process is a little weird because they can they can make certain things for you like the title page and the whatever page and whatever and so you have to reformat your book so that it will be they can put it together for each individual market like apple books does not like you to have any mention of that amazon um, entity in the book so even in your, hi, this is available, blah, 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 and Amazon, they, they will refuse it. Okay. But the nice thing about it is you're not chasing royalties for all of those different things. draft to digital puts them all together and then sends you an, a, a transfer. And they have charts for everything. In fact, um, so two of the short stories I've had published in the last couple of years are actually in anthologies that are run through draft to digital A bonus for that is that they will sort out um, the royalties that go to each person. So there's, an, uh, there's been a problem in, in the anthology market in the past where the publisher hasn't sent um, people royalties. Um, and this way, it's completely out of the anthology editor's hands. D to D just does it. And that was first the Drabble advent calendar, which is flash fiction, well, Drabbles, um, about uh, advent. So, you know, it's a calendar. The more recent one is small shifts. Um, very small see mosquito and hair and otter and dung beetle it's it's a great fun anthology to be in but i don't have to worry about them you know the, the editor not sending me royalties in a timely fashion because as i can go onto the d to d site and go okay how's it going and get the information you need. Find out exactly how much I can expect to come in. Um, so it, in the uh, in the chat, we've got a couple of uh, questions about uh, covers. Um, there's a question about why would anybody want to go with a pre-made cover if a <laughs> an artist could resell the same cover, and so you don't have an exclusive on the cover. Yeah. Um, uh, there are a lot of artists and options for your own cover. Right now, there's a lot of outside resources that you can harvest for almost every component of the self-publishing process. That reminds me of in uh, 1898, there was a gold rush up in the Yukon and mm -hmm. lots of people made money, but the big money makers were the people that set up stores selling the, uh, the stuff to the- Selling, selling uh, stuff to the miners, yeah. Yeah, so, really. Uh, but back to covers. Uh, any thoughts on covers? My understanding yeah. that the cover is key in selling your book. Yeah. Carl. Carl. Uh, yeah, I would like to address that. This, for example, is the front cover for my uh, third book. Mm -hmm. And it's a wraparound. It's a six by nine. 
so the, that the cover wraps around and the text is on the front. I paid $400 for this. It's completely custom from a Calgary artist. So these things are readily available. And the layout of the book, you know, there was a bunch of discussion on layout of books. This, this is not rocket science, you know, like in, 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 in the groups that I facilitate, we, I, I give this template to people and it, it's all laid out, everything. They just have to fill in the blanks, you know? And so, and once you have that, you create a PDF, that's it, game over. But you do need a real rocket science cover. Yeah, one thing that I've heard is a tip is make sure that the title is still readable when you put it on thumbnail size, because if it goes up on Amazon or if you're uh, advertising on social media, what people see is this big. And if they can't tell what the image is or if they can't tell what your title is, it's kind of a waste. Okay, why don't we talk a little bit about traditional publishing as well, because I'm sure there are plenty of people in the audience that would be interested in, in traditional publishing. I know my uh, experience and background is with small press, Laxa Media and Five Rivers uh, were both small presses that I went through. And for me, the, um, the process was fairly straightforward. I was really lucky that my editor lived right in Calgary and uh, we had a lot of email conversations and I got my editing notes um, through email, but we actually met in person. He's uh, Lucas K. Law, really awesome guy. Um, and he was very open with me about the entire process. Also, he was extremely organized. Um, he would have the print books made and delivered good six months before the book dropped because he was sending them in the mail to reviewers, the ones that needed a hard, hard copy book uh, to, um, to, to do the reviews. Um, he was really right on top of getting me blog tours and uh, interviews and um, uh, places where I could write blogs and put them up on like John Scalzi's blog or uh, Mary Robin, Robinette Kowal's blog. Um, so he was really well organized and did a beautiful job. In fact, he got uh, uh, awards from the Alberta Book Publishers Association who are not looking at the content of the book at all. They're looking at the publication of the book. And he had it out in the different formats. My first book even came out in audio. Um, so, and he consulted me on the covers. Like, I think in, May, in, in the Big Thrive Press, you're very lucky if anybody consults you on the covers. It's my, what I've been told, but I've never been published by Big Five, only by small press. And I've had an excellent um, experience there. Having said that, I like to go back to what Carl said about your goals. And my goal was not to make a ton of money. And guess what? I met that goal too. I have not made a ton of money. <laughs> Yeah, welcome to the club. <laughs> so, uh, traditional publishing. What, what, what? Would I, you I uh, ha feel very good about traditional publishing. I have had very good relationships with traditional publishers. I have been consulted on covers. Um, I have had good relationships with the editors. Um, there, you know. There are two things, I think, with traditional publishers that are a bit more complicated. One is it can take so long <laughs> to get accepted by a traditional publisher. And uh, so that is an issue for those who really want to move ahead quickly. Now, my work is all regional, so I have not made a ton of money either, but, you know, you're writing can give you other opportunities too. Uh, opportunities for readings, opportunities for all, all kinds of things. Um, and that's there. If you are lucky, the publisher, the, him, him or herself or the company will help you do those things. But what I have found in recent years is perhaps they are not 
doing as much of that as they used to. Uh, when some of my books came out, I had radio interviews and you know all kinds of things um, that were very positive. And so uh, again, my my response to traditional publishing has been very good, but my work is regional. So I'm not trying to uh, get readers in New York or Los Angeles or any place else. So I can have these closer relationships with the publisher and uh, uh, it can be, it has been very positive experience. Now, one of the things that did happen and here I caution people, I shouldn't say the name of the company, but think of the company that's the biggest book seller. I'm talking about bookstore in Canada, mm -hmm. not saying its name, <laughs> but <laughs> in fact, they have brought down publishers, traditional publishers, because they will order so many books and then send them back not pay for them and send them back. And so they have brought down some. Even for self-publishers, I think you have to be very careful because you can go to those stores and you can get your book in there, um, but you really have to uh, know what they're going to do for you, how much they're going to pay, how many books they're going to uh, take and they, in those instances, too, if they don't sell those books, they send them back. And this has not happened to me, but it did happen to one of my publishers. And so those are the more complicated things about traditional publishers, which as a writer for them, uh, you, you can do, you have no control over. But I think both self-publishers and traditional publishers can run into these issues. And uh, self -pub uh, traditional publishers sell. The, the company who you may love sells to somebody else and their focus is different. And so there you are, you know, uh, you don't want your books to be recycled. So you take them and then you still have to sell books. <laughs> so uh, many complications, but I like traditional publishers for the most part. Carl, I think, has a comment. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to address this because, you know, first of all, this on-demand printing has, has completely changed the printing industry. I don't know how many people realize it, but when you order a book from Amazon, that book is printed specifically for you the day you ordered it. They do not have any books on the shelves, none. And so these books, this book, how much does it cost? To, to produce this book, nothing, absolutely nothing. It's complete, there is no cost involved whatsoever. You provide the cover, you provide the manuscript, you submit it and it's placed on Amazon. Now, the question is how much do, how much do they charge for this? Well, this book is you know roughly 400 pages long, six by nine format. It, uh, well, here, I'll give you actual numbers. 400 pages. Let's say that you, uh, that the printing cost on this, on this book is going to be $5.65 US on that book, okay? So let's say you sell it for $11. The royalties on this one are 60%. So 40% goes to Amazon, 60% comes directly into your bank account. And, and so if the book printing cost is $5.65 and you sell it for $11 US, then you are going to make a royalty of 95 cents, which is typically what I, I, my royalty on my books is $1, typically. Now you as an author, you can, you can buy these things as author copies and they will not charge you for the royalty. So you can buy these things in 10, 50, 100, you can buy thousands of them if you want. And the cost is going to be $5.65 per book plus shipping. So, you know, self-publishing, if you know what you're doing, there is no cost involved. 
So you want to take some of these to a bookstore and say, you know, put them on the shelves. Well, you buy them at $5.64 and, and you give them three or four at a time, you know, or so 10 at a time. We've got uh, two questions um, in the Q&A and nine minutes. So if we could just be really fast, maybe we could get through both of them. The first one is, if you want to go the route of traditional publishing, do you need an agent? In general, yes. No, no you don't. <clears throat> it depends, uh, certainly from what I understand. Uh, you might need that if you're going to American traditional publishers, uh, especially the big guys. Uh, but in Canada, if you're going to the medium size or smaller publishers, uh, for the most part, you don't need it, but they might be able to get you a better deal. I can't speak to that and get you into the big publishers. Uh, so it depends what your work is and who your audience is uh, too, I, I would think, but others would have thoughts about it. Yeah. In big case, basically with the if you want to get in the big five you absolutely need an agent there are some that some big publishers that do sort of a, the occasional yeah fine just send us your stuff um and then the smaller publishers can be open all, all, part or all of the year but again trying to decipher that contract into english is you want That's where I would want an agent or, or at least a lawyer to look it over. Yeah. So yeah, I went through small press, did not have an agent, and I vetted my own contract and I'm happy with it. Um, yeah. Having said that, I think my advice to anybody immediately is going to be go to the website and check out what they say. I think that there are a couple of good sized publishers. Now I'm only aware of the science fiction fantasy field, but Tor will take them without agents and so will DAW and they're good sized uh, publishing companies. But it's also my understanding that if, if, if a book comes across a, an editor's desk from an agent, it'll probably get read sooner. If yeah. it's in slush, you might be waiting a year, year and a half, two years before they even look at it. So maybe you don't need an agent in some of these cases, but yeah, don't hold your breath while you're waiting for your book in slush on tour. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other question, did you want to say anything about that, Carl, before I go into the other question? Yes. The other question, is it worth the effort and cost to film a book trailer? These things go in waves. And I think at one point, book trailers were the thing to do. Um, sort of like a movie trailer. Um, but I, I don't know how popular they are at the moment. So, but yeah, it, it can- I do have experience with book trailers. Mm -hmm. And uh, because I've got uh, four, five, five of them out for, for my books so far and planning on doing more. Um, it, there are different types of book trailers. You can download stock images and some of them for free. Some of them you'd have to pay like five bucks for five images or something like that. It's pretty cheap. You can get stock images, you can get stock music. Uh, you does, it takes a fairly simple program to put them together. You do a little voiceover, you have a picture of the book and it's pretty straightforward and wouldn't cost you very much money. You can do it yourself or get an artist friend from ACAB or something like that. You could do it pretty cheap. The other type is more the action adventure where you actually have actors in costumes with sets and so forth, which is the type that I did. And um, again, I called on my artist daughter who has all, the, she's got the professional editing software, right? Uh, actor friends of mine, including Randy McCharles, who by the way, if you put him in the right costume, looks like a king. Uh, <laughs> called on a writer friend of mine who was so generous she let me film in her house because she lives in practically a palace she, it, it, yeah so um and my other and my sister who is a horsewoman so we had horses in our videos so if you have these sorts of things you can do it fairly cheap and probably 
my five book trailers uh, cost me, you know, buying fabric for costumes and sewing them myself, including making shirts for the boys out of a sheet out of the basement, right? <laughs> um, cost me under $400 for five trailers. So pretty cheap. But you could also hire that out, in which case I think it's just going up and up and up. Does it work? I had a lot of fun and I have book trailers. <coughs> I don't think I sold any books. Okay, you know what? We're at 3.46. We've got three minutes left. Um, is there something that you would like to cover? The topic is self-publishing versus traditional publishing. Um, so is there any like comparatives that you'd like to make like, or, or just any tips that we haven't covered that you'd like to cover uh, before our, our time is up? A lot of the, the thing is um, people can set up a micro press. So again, um, the, the press that did this is a micro press started by one person. It now publishes them plus these anthologies. Javari Press publishes me and GW Renshaw at the moment. It can grow. Anyone else? With a lot of publishers not doing a lot of the marketing that, that you got from Laxa Media, um, you know, you have to do it your own anyway. Carl? Um, if, if people are interested in this whole self-publishing process that I described a little bit today, uh, send me an email through my uh, website. It's in the bio section of of these uh, reports that were issued for this conference. And I'll, I'll send information on how to go about doing this. Yeah. Well, that's generous of you. Thank you. I just popped my um, contact info and whatnot into the chat. There it is. Good. Uh, I think I raised two things before we close out and they, you haven't yelled out yet, but you still get a turn. <laughs> uh, is the two things is number one, taxes huge topic learn about it there is a way that you do not have to pay 30 percent u.s taxes so check that out and the second thing i would say is you can write you can put out a product whether traditional or whatever the big thing the most difficult thing isn't actually the writing and the publishing in my opinion it's the distribution and the discoverability it is you might have a great book and if nobody knows about it, it isn't going to go anywhere. Faye, last word to you. Uh, I think you, we've covered every uh, thing that I was interested in. I, uh, I do agree. I think, again, it is uh, what are your strengths? And if your strength is writing, maybe you don't want to spend all that time with the financial end of things. Um, I really think it depends on your strengths, but it also depends on who is your audience. And it's quite different if you want, I, th I think for instance, fantasy science fiction, they can sell more easily to New York and <laughs> Los Angeles and all these other places. So what kind of writing are you doing? Who's your audience and what are your strengths? And if you look at all of those, I think it helps you determine where you should be. But um, most of the publishers in Canada, you go to their website, they give you their submission guidelines. They say if they will accept um, multiple submissions and you know they say what they're interested in, whether they're interested in um, history, fantasy, whatever it might be. So go to the websites and check and let that inform your decision too. Okay, and perfect timing. It's exactly 3.50. We need to vacate the channel for the next group. Okay. Although we are coming to the end of the conference, I think there's maybe only one or two left, but I would like to have a huge thank you to my panelists, to uh, the Imaginative Fiction Writers Association and When Words Collide for giving us this opportunity to present this panel and to all of our uh, attendees who, who were here with us today. So thank you everybody.
And Thanks. we'll see you hopefully in person next year. Yes. <laughs> Thanks very much. Bye.